Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Prince Automation Destination, this side Prince. Welcome once again to our GitLab series. So in our last lecture of GitLab series, we covered the architecture of GitLab, wherein we discussed that we can utilize GitLab as a source code management tool to store the code. Also, we discussed that we can utilize GitLab as a CI tool as well to test the code that we have stored in the GitLab how it happens so we have runners registered on this particular gitlab instance and as soon as there is a change in this gitlab uh, repository or gitlab code it detect that change and it will reroute the jobs defined in the pipeline job pipeline file i mean against the runners registered on this particular machine so what are these runners so these runners are similar to machines or agents or nodes in case of jenkins so today we will try to understand more on gitlab runner so what is gitlab runner so gitlab runner is one application or a software or a service that we need to install on a machine which we want to utilize for the execution purpose execution of job i mean right as this is a software so we can install it on any cloud machine such as aws azure or google cloud and we can install it on on premise machines as well talking about the operating systems where we can install it we can install it on linux based operating systems uh, windows mac os and FreeBSD. and after installation of runner what we need to do we need to register the runner against the gitlab instance as well so that we can set up a connectivity between the gitlab instance which is gitlab.com and the gitlab runner because they are on the separate machines how it happens so for that purpose we need to do the registration right so we'll be talking about this part in the next lecture when we'll be discussing about the private runners okay once after this registration has been done or once after the connectivity has been set up between the gitlab runner and the gitlab instance the next step is gitlab runner act like a an agent and it act like a an agent or we can say worker for the gitlab ci service ci cd service and as soon as there is a change it listen to that job request from the gitlab and it will execute that job and will report back to the gitlab that execution has been completed so this is the overall purpose of runner now type of the runners so gitlab provide its own runners which are hosted by the gitlab itself and they are known as gitlab managed runners and uh, we can set up our own runners on our own environments as well so they are known as self managed runners so this is the high level category of runners right now based on access runners are categorized into three sections one is instance runners group runners and project runners right so in gitlab we have a concept of group and under group we can have many projects right so instance runners are accessible to all the projects available under all the groups right and group runner uh, will be utilized for all the projects under a particular group right and talking about the project runner so they are available specific to the project so these are the categories of uh, runner now let us try to understand from the ui where we can locate these runners right so uh, you see that this is project section and this is group section and if i go inside this group section you will see that i have created one group which is automation group so you can utilize this group section to group your test cases let us say you want to maintain java uh, java framework you want to maintain js framework so you can create your own groups in my case i have created automation group and under this we can create multiple projects so as you can see that we have created two this is the one that we are talking about in current series that is gitlab demo yt yt stand for youtube right so this is where we need to go after that what we need to do we need to scroll on the left side and go to the settings section and from settings we need to navigate to cicd section here under runner section you need to locate this runners first and under the runners you need to expand this particular section if you will read this statement runners are processes that pick up and execute cicd jobs for gitlab okay and as we discussed that there are like many type of three type of runners mainly project runners instance runners and group runners right for uh, current series uh, we'll be using the gitlab managed runners which is provided by the gitlab itself and they are hosted by the gitlab it itself so uh, they are mostly instance runners so these runners are available to all the groups and projects so if you will see this is the list of runners provided by the gitlab itself green icon indicate that this is available and can be utilized and talking about this one if you will see here this is a stale runner which is contacted uh, last two months ago right 
and uh, this is instance runners which ever which is available for all the groups and projects so we can set up project specific runners as well which we'll be discussing in the next lecture and they will be known as self-hosted runners as well talking about the group uh, group runners so these runners are shared across projects in this particular group right if there would be any group runner so that can be utilized against all the projects of this particular group but group runner is out of scope for the current series so won't be discussing more about the group, group runner okay now uh, we have discussed about the runners right now the next thing is how the registration of runner happens so as we discussed that when we download the runner the next thing is we need to install the runner in case of gitlab hosted runner we don't need to worry about it they do by themselves they take care of it i mean but in case we install it on our on infrastructure so what happens is we need to download the gitlab runner then we need to install the runner so once after installation of runner we need to register the runner with the gitlab instance uh, in our case it is gitlab.com and in your case it could be anything maybe it could be your application or your organization name as well for example gitlab.abc.com so you need to register that runner against the gitlab instance right once after uh, instance uh, this setup has been done or that connectivity has been set up between the gitlab instance and the gitlab runner during the registration itself we need to choose the executor so what is this executor so this is the new thing right so executor determines environment each job runs in okay for example in one in windows machine we want to execute the test case we want to execute the job directly in windows machine so we'll be using shell as the executor and in case we want to execute uh, our job against the docker windows executor so we'll be using docker windows as a ex executor during registration right so let us uh, understand more on this so when we register a runner we must choose executor because executor determine environment each job runs in meaning if we want to execute locally so we'll be choosing shell if we want to execute the test cases or job in the container so we'll be using docker container or docker executor right let us try to understand from the use cases so for example if we want our ci cd job to run powershell commands then what we'll be doing first of all we'll have to install the runner on the windows server and during registration of uh, runner we need to choose powershell as a executor right second case is suppose uh, if we want our ci cd job to run commands in docker container then what we'll be doing first of all we'll have to install the runner on linux server and then we'll have to choose docker as the executor right so this is the concept of executor you will understand more on executor when we'll be setting up the private runner and we'll be choosing uh, the executor right now they are like different type of executor so we have ssh if we want to connect to some remote machine right and if uh, we want to utilize the shell of the operating system then we have parallels we have docker we have docker windows as well in case of windows operating system then docker autoscaler kubernetes instance in our case we'll be mostly focusing on docker executor which is used by the gitlab hosted runners as well because we are going to use the gitlab managed runners only so they'll be using docker based runners and we can utilize images as well we'll be talking more about this in the upcoming section don't worry about this but this is the overall glimpse of what are the executor right now during registration of runner we need to provide we should choose a tag as well so these tags are nothing but our labels for this particular runner right so that we can choose these runners or we can provide these runners in the gitlab yaml file that is a pipeline file to filter out the specific runner where we want to execute the job so this is the purpose of tags right now what are the different features of gitlab runner so there are like many gitlab features but i have uh, mentioned uh, like some of them so runner can uh, execute single job it can execute concurrent job right and uh, we can run job locally so as we discussed that we need to choose executor so if we want to do it uh, locally so we'll be using shell as the executor if we want to use docker container then first of all we should have docker installed in the machine and then we should uh, use executor as docker executor and uh, we can use docker container and using docker container we can connect to ssh we, we can connect to remote machine as well uh, over ssh we can use docker container with auto scaling okay and we can connect to a remote machine as well so these uh, this is how gitlab runner can be utilized to execute the job okay it enables caching of docker container so first time when we are executing so we are downloading some content right so next time uh, 
again when we are executing uh, the test cases or job so it it has capability to use the caching right so this is how we can utilize gitlab runner this is the feature of gitlab runner so this is what i wanted to cover guys as part of current video so let us quickly recap what we have covered so first of all we try to understand what is gitlab runner wherein we discussed that it is an application then we discussed different type of runners based on who is managing it gitlab managed runners managed by gitlab itself self managed runners which we want to self manage right then based on access instance runners which are accessible to all projects group runners project runners right then we discussed on the registration process that is uh, connectivity setup right and then we discussed about the executor and role of executor and uh, we discussed about various executors and we discussed the concept of tag as well and then we discussed about the gitlab features gitlab runner features i mean so this is what i wanted to cover guys thank you for watching i would request you to please like share and subscribe thank you once again